we'll probably find out before it's over with you. But this morning I'm going to speak to you from my heart, and I'm going to start in Psalm 106. 106. The simple, like they say, the short answer to all this is in these two verses in Psalm 106, and um, very simple, too simple for the world to grasp, but it sums up the whole problem in two verses. Psalm 106, verse number 29. Thus they provoked him to anger with their inventions, and the plague break in upon them. Then stood up Phineas and executed judgment, and so the plague was stayed. There's the cause of the plague, verse 29, the cure for the plague, verse 30. What causes plagues, men sins. What cures them is getting right with God. That's, that's the short answer. Long answer is the same. It just involves a lot more detail. I want to preach this morning on the subject, the coronavirus, a step toward the mark of the beast. As of last night, um, just in America, almost close to getting to 3,000 people infected, 60 dead, 74, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, in, in, the, in, the, in the world, estimates 155,000 dead, or I'm sorry, cases, and 6,000 dead worldwide. Now, to introduce this message this morning, I am not a medical doctor, nor I'm going to try not going to try to be. I am a Bible-believing preacher. That's what I've always been, and I try to stay out of their field and expect them to stay out of mine, except where the biblical principles and prophecies or morals have been questioned or violated, we leave it up to them. I listen to, I respect, and I try to follow the advice of a doctor, my doctor. I listen to him. He tells me stuff when I, when I go see him once in a while, and he said, you should do this, 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 this. I respect him. He knows a lot more. That's his expertise, and I respect him in his field. Now, corona is an interesting word. The word means crown, and that's because that virus looks like it's got little little thing crown uh, sticking up, and there are several actual corona viruses, but this is the one they, they designated COVID-19 that started in 2019, in December or whenever it was. Came from bats, they say, not sure about that, and almost all plagues in history come from animals, jump from, to humans, and fleas most of the time, uh, from uh, bats, horses, camels, and rats especially. When, when sailors would come from other countries or war, they'd bring home ships with rats, with diseases, and they would wind up infecting humans. And I'm going to talk a lot more about that tonight in tonight's message. Uh, you don't, you don't want to miss. Um, as I said, as of right now, this morning, March 15th, it may be two weeks before a lot of people watch this, uh, there are no confirmed, as of last night, cases in western North Carolina. And I'm expecting that probably to change. Thank God for his protection upon us so far. And no doubt that will change. So the Lord's been very merciful and good to us. We've had many viruses before. The SARS, Ebola, uh, all, all of these things. A virus is an infective agent that can copy itself, reproduce itself. Make it more and more and more, exact, like them CDs back there. Just make copies of the, of the original over and over and over, and they're just the same as the original. But it has to have a living being to do that, uh, to live inside of it. There's three words I like to uh, define as I begin this morning. Um, the, one of them is outbreak, one of them is epidemic, and the other is pandemic. Many of you may not know the difference between those three until this week. An outbreak is just that, something that breaks out in a small, unusual, defined period of time in a certain place in a certain population, mostly confined to a certain geographical area. 
An epidemic is when something spreads to a larger geographical area and maybe into a country. You've heard that word epidemiologist that they talked about all week. Uh, that somebody who studies that kind of stuff. A pandemic is when it goes international, many countries, and out of control. Uh, for example, this morning, Italy, the whole country of Italy and Spain is just about on lockdown. They say uh, on the news, I, I never turn the TV on on Sunday morning unless there's an emergency, but I thought I better check, see what the latest is, and I just had on like five minutes, and it was showing uh, Spain where people are literally, literally shut up in their houses. Uh, uh, just about the whole country. And uh, that's, that's what's going on. Gatherings, we all saw the cancellation of the, the NBA, uh, the Major League Baseball, the NCAA uh, basketball tournaments, and now on down to schools uh, here in North Carolina and in several other states. Now, as we begin to think about this this morning, listen to me carefully. As usual, as always, there are nuts and, and um, uh, fanatical, radical nuts on both sides of any issue. On one side, there's the people saying, oh my goodness, this is the end of the world, we're all going to die. Uh, and, and they're wrong. It's not the end of the world. Uh, we know that from the Bible. On the other side, there are people saying, oh, this ain't no big deal, it's a bunch of junk. They're wrong too. It is a big deal. So as always... We, 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 we stay with what the Bible said. I heard one preacher say uh, on the internet, I'm, I'm, in, I'm, I'm really interested in seeing how long they're going to say this, of uh, them saying, bless God. Well, they didn't say, bless God, they don't talk like that. They'd say, uh, we accept no virus. We accept it. Just tell it no. Uh, we'll see about that in a couple of weeks. I, I, hope, they, I hope they're right, uh, but, but we'll see. One, one preacher's wife was on his program saying, we just not accept, tell, them, tell it no, tell it no. I don't think it can hear you. Uh, but uh, anyway, we take the same level-headed, biblical approach just like we do on everybody else. i tell you one thing, we've seen just how quick everything can change just like that. Life as we knew it up to Wednesday, it ain't the same no more, and it ain't going to be for a while. We see just how quick everything. We're living in a day when everything's connected to everything. Years ago, when, a, when an epidemic broke out, it was in a country, and, and a lot of times it was other places, and it, we didn't even know about it uh, before the communication like it is now. Now everything's connected to everything. When one thing goes down, everything goes down. And we've become so dependent upon the, the, the rest of the world, the government, our, the, the media, our, our food chains, everything that when it, co when it crashes, everything crashes. And so we're going to think about that this, this morning. And I'm going to say, uh, what, what does the C COVID-19 have to do with the Bible and the mark of the beast? When I announced this sermon Wednesday night, uh, a lot of people thought, oh, Brother Danny, you're always trying to make everything. Uh, no, I'm, I'm just going to show you, if you'll listen to me, how this is connected to a step toward the mark of the beast. This is not the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast ain't a disease. It's a mark. But this is a step toward preparing the world for a one-world government, a one-world monetary system, and a one-world religion. This is definitely a step toward that uh, day. And that day will come, no doubt about it. Now, three things I want to say about this, and then three as far as my advice for you as a Christian and for those listening wherever around the world this morning. Number one, number one. I believe that the, the, the devil will use a situation like this and a thing like this uh, for three things. Number one is a way to stop church. The devil hates the church. The devil, the second power to God, hates church. He'll do anything in his power to stop church. Uh, he'll do it. And this is, the satanic forces will use this opportunity as a, quote, trial run just to see how far they can go in stopping church. Now, uh, there's, there's nowhere in the Bible where it says we have to meet in a church building. Matter of, fact, matter of fact, in the Bible, there is no public worship service. 
in the Bible, there's public preaching service and evangelistic service. And that's what this is. You've never heard me call this a house of worship. Uh, the, the Bible don't call it. It's not a house of worship. We don't even meet here to worship. We worship God all week long. We meet here to preach and pray and get the, the God. We do worship God while we're here. Don't get me wrong. But that's not the primary purpose of this place. This, this is a fire department. This is search and rescue work that you and I are in. And the devil hates that. He hates it. And he just uh, wants to see how far he, he can go with this. See, uh, we, we, the Bible said we, we, we not to forsake the assembly of ourselves together. Now, we don't have to come into a building like this. Uh, it, they, they met in, in houses in the New Testament. And it may come to that point where we have to do that again. If, uh, if that time comes, it may not come in our lifetime. But when, when circumstances change and the time comes when they literally forbid you to have an open public place like this to worship God, then we meet in homes. If they ever say you are not allowed to worship God at home, then we got big problems. Then we have a, a right to break, uh, to break the law because we are supposed to worship God and honor Him. If it comes to homes, they, 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 if you try to stop from that, you've got to do it anyway. Now, we, we may not be able to do that. They may padlock the door for before the Lord comes back. This may be the step of a many that's coming in two years, in five years, in ten years, everyone a little more intense, everyone a little bit worse, everyone a little bit as we step toward a one-world government. Don't doubt it for a second, people. The devil hates this church and every church trying to do anything for God. The devil hates anybody who gives out tracts, who puts out the gospel, who supports missionaries, who runs buses. The devil hates it. And, and, and not only the devil hates it, there's a lot of people. There's a lot of uh, uh, political leaders and there's a lot of, of uh, uh, just atheists and pe just people in general who hate the work of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. So it's a way to stop church. Number two, uh, uh, what, it, what it's going to show us is it's a way to stifle the country. The way to stifle the country. Our economy is going to hit, be hit extremely hard by this. And let me tell you something, brother. We're going to fill it. We're going to fill it financially. It's going to be, it's going to be really completely thrown upside down, probably. Um, and, and because of that, the devil will use that to stifle the country. Now, when something like this takes place, uh, it makes you think of several things. One thing I was thinking the other day, I thought, uh, you know, there's a lot of atheists. Them old atheists used to get out, and they'd shake their fist up at God, and they'd say, I dare you. If there's a God, strike me with lightning. Ah, you ain't got no power. And everybody would go, oh, my goodness, oh, my goodness. And, and they'd say, my goodness, God's going to strike him with lightning. And the Lord never did. He's not going to waste power on people like that, that dumb. Uh, he, never, he never did do stuff like that. And I got to thinking, there's, there's a lot of people saying, where's God? Well, he, they witnessed to a boy one time over in Asheville, and he said, you know what? He said, you keep telling me that I'll stand before God. I ain't scared. He said, when I stand before God, I'll go up there and choke him right on his throne. And that's the attitude that a lot of people have. They think God, they brought God down. Cartoons have made Jesus look like a sissy and the devil look like a muscle builder. And the world's portrayed uh, Jesus as some kind of effeminate, sissified uh, weakling. And the world thinks uh, Christians are all hypocrites and work. Let me tell you something, brother. If God wants to bring this world down, he don't, he don't have to have a lightning bolt hit uh, the continents and split up the continents to kill people. The Lord don't have to have a 50 on a rector scale um, earthquake to bust up the planet, brother, he can take something so little we can't even see it with a microscope and wipe us out if he wants to. We better fear God. We better fear God. Your life is in his hands. He's got your life in his hands this morning. And I'm telling you today, it is a way to stifle our country. Everybody uses something like this. I'm using it this morning. I use this to witness. I use, we went out on bus route yesterday. We knocked on doors. The, the kids were so excited about coming to church today. You wouldn't believe it. Hey? Uh, they were so excited. And I, I said, hallelujah. Oh, we're going to have church and we're going to enjoy the Lord and bless the Lord and enjoy God. And, and I use this. I use this. I use this to be a witness uh, for the glory of God. Now, everybody else uses it too. The, the, um, the, the companies 
Uh, anybody that needs a job, go get find you a toilet paper factory, brother. Start you one. You can get rich by this weekend. Uh, I still ain't figured out what that's got to do with the coronavirus. Don't tell me. Uh, uh, but uh, 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 you find hand sanitizer. You can invent it. All you got to do, uh, some old redneck lady in the dollar store somewhere tells me, all you got to do is get you some of that um, aloe. Aloe. Big aloe. Pour the rubbing alcohol in it. Shake it up. Hand sanitizer, that's all it is. And you can make your own, get rich, but a mar. Take the flea market and, 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 and sell it. Uh, but our economy is definitely suffering and going to suffer. Now, the political parties use it too, just like I'm using it to preach and be a witness. Uh, the Republicans used to say, well, well, see, boy, we've got, we're going to, we're handling this right. We're going to do all that. More power to you, I hope you are. Do the best you can. President declared a day of prayer today. I'm thankful for that. He's going to church here preaching this morning. Thankful for that. Maybe God will get a hold of his heart. Maybe God will get a hold of their heart. Maybe we can see a revival. Great, wonderful. The Democrats are using it also. Uh, they're trying to say, hey, you ain't no good. We're going to overthrow you. And they got more to win in this than, than the other side does. And, I'm, and if you think I'm being political, you are listening to demonic spirits. You hear me? If you think I'm being political, you're listening to the wicked spirits. I'm not. I ain't, I ain't got no politics in mind. But I'm saying there are people in this world that would like to see our economy crash to overthrow the powers that be. They would. They're, they're hoping for it. Matter of fact, there's even been some insinuation of how this started in China. I ain't making them because I don't know. I know one thing. The devil uses it. The government uses it. The Democrats use it. The Republican uses it. Everybody uses it. Lazy preachers use it who don't want to study anyway and say, Whoo, we have to call off church and I still get my salary and my pension. Uh, but I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, we are seeing the way to stifle our country. America still supports more missionaries than any place in the world. America still puts out more gospel than any place in the world. And we see it moving toward that day when we hope, hope the devil would try to stop us from doing it. Let me just say this about this business of the law. I will, we will obey the law. We will obey the law. Even though something inside me says, we will obey what the law says. Well, we will not have a gathering of more than 100 at a time and, and do what the law says. We are not advocating breaking the law. You're supposed to respect and honor those that are above you. So we'll do that. If we have to do it, we'll have to do it. But they said the exceptions to those laws are restaurants, hospitals, absolutely, fire and rescue, police stations, stuff like that. Did you know the church is a restaurant? You know you come here to eat? You know, feeding your soul is just as important as feeding your body. You know, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Did you know this morning that the church is a rescue mission? We are a mission. This ain't no place where we all get in here and swoon in a house of worship. Brother, we're on a mission. We have a divine command from God to preach the gospel to every creature. And all that. so uh, we should be exempt. But we ain't. Uh, what about separating the church and state? Where'd that go all of a sudden? Uh, uh, listen, I know what we can do. We'll all meet at Walmart next week. That's legal. 500 of us next week at Walmart in the parking lot, and y'all will sing and I'll preach. Amen. Golden Corral. Amen. In the parking lot. You see, that the devil is using this to try to stop church. We'll cooperate best we can, but I'm telling you, by the grace of God, we'll stand for the Lord and Him first. I said, number one, it's a way to stop church. Number two, it's a way to stifle the country. Number three, it's a way to seize the currency. Now, for this, I want you to take your Bible and turn to Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter number 13. You say, Brother Danny, what has that got to do with it? I said a minute ago that your money is the most filthy thing you can touch. The Bible said in 1 Timothy 3.3, 3, it calls it filthy lucre. You don't know where it's been. You don't know where it's been. The money you got changed yesterday at the dollar store, at a toilet paper factory, don't know, you don't know where that money was a few days ago. The coronavirus, the experts say, 
can live on that piece of wood right there for three days. It can also live in the air for three hours. So you're going to go to the store? You're not going to go to the store? You're not going to go, you're not going to go uh, to the post office? You're not going to go to the grocery store? Yes, you're going to go. You're going to go. And if somebody coughed it and it's in the air, can live three hours in the air. Now let's talk about money for a little bit. Revelation 13. This is during the tribulation period. The Antichrist rises in verse 1. The beast out of the sea. You see that? The sea is multitudes of peoples and nations. It tells you what it represents. A beast in the book of Revelation is a king or a kingdom. So the king, the kingdom rises up out of the nations and this one man who will be the Antichrist, the opposite of Christ, Jesus foretold of this man when he said, I'm coming in my father's name and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. The Bible foretells him in 2 Thessalonians 2 where it said, the man of sin will arise, the son of perdition. There's only one man in the Bible called the son of perdition. That's Judas Iscariot. And the Bible said when Judas died, it don't even say he went to hell. It said he went to his own place. Nobody, it's not said that about anybody else in history. The spirit of Judas Iscariot will ascend out of the pit and inhabit the body of the Antichrist. You know, like Jesus' baptism, the Holy Spirit came upon him there at his baptism. The spirit of, the, of, the, of Judas will come into the body of the Antichrist, and he's called the son of perdition. Now, look what he does. Look at Revelation 13, verse number 13. 13, 13, like yesterday. And he doeth great wonders, so that he makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. Saying to them that dwell on the earth they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. Now hold your finger there just a second. There's going to be a time his, his wound will live. That's why that one eye stuff. That's why you see all them movie stars and everything cover up one eye. All that stuff. It's a pit. The, the Antichrist has a bad right eye in the book of Zechariah chapter 11. And he's, he's, he's got this bad right eye. That's why this one eye. That's why you see this one eye. I mean, we, we've talked and talked about that. I'm sure I'll talk about it more. So the, the Antichrist will impose this law. He has a deadly wound, but he gets better or resurrected, possibly. And the Antichrist will have power to do miracles in the sight of people. Now, let's just imagine for a second. I'm not saying this is exactly what's going to happen. I don't know. I'm just imagining for a minute. Jesus said in Matthew 24, in the last days, which would be now right on up till he comes, maybe some uh, during the tribulation, I'm sure, there would be pestilences. You know what a pestilence is? That's a disease. And all that there's no cure for. Pestilence. There will be pestilence. Now let's just suppose, let's just suppose, you heard that, that, this thing dies down in a few weeks or months and then it comes around back next year. We deal with it for a few years. Then there's another one. Then there's another one. Then there's another one. Jesus said they would come. Suppose that millions and hundreds of millions of people were infected by some disease. That time will come. I'm not saying this is it at all. I'm saying this is a step toward that. Are you, are you with me? Say amen. Amen. All right, now if the Lord comes, I mean, if, uh, before the Lord comes, or after he comes, hopefully we'll be gone by then, and he, he, when this thing happens, let's just suppose that millions and millions of people have a, have a disease that can't be healed. And all of a sudden, the, quote, government, which he'll be in charge of at that time, comes out with a cure, an inoculation. But the only way you can get this inoculation is receive that mark. You don't think people will be bowing down at their feet and worshiping? You better believe they will. Now, there will be a one world religion, there will be a one world dictator, and there's going to be a one world monetary system. Watch this. Look at verse number 15. 
and he had power. I'm reading you the Bible. You claim to believe it all these years. Now listen. And he had power to give life under the image of the beast. That's some strange stuff there. That the image of the beast, that's that Iron Man. That's Iron Man. Uh, part man, part computer, part demon. Uh, should speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in, not on, in their right hand or in their forehead. Some kind of chip, some kind of device, I don't know. In. And verse 17 said that no man might buy or sell. You can't buy nothing, you can't sell nothing. You can't buy groceries, you can't pay your bills, you can't go to the doctor, you can't go get gas for your car, you can't get your car inspected, you can't get attacked, nothing. Unless you have the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Are we headed that way? The only way that can happen is get rid of cash. That's the only way that can happen. As long as people got out here money handing around, you can't stop people from buying and selling. So the plan is, the plan is, is to eventually eliminate cash, cashless society. You've heard it preached 25, 30 years. Right now, they just had an article on uh, TV the other day called Dirty Money. The spread of the coronavirus is forcing institutions around the world to rethink a very, very germy surface cash. In South Korea, Central Bank is taking all banknotes, cash, out of circulation for two weeks and burning some of it. China is, is treating a lot of its cash with ultraviolet heat, try to desanitize it, and laundering some of it and destroying some of it. The Louvre Museum there in Paris has completely banned cash altogether, cards only. For the mark to be implemented, you have to decrease and then finally eliminate cash. That way you can control all financial transactions all by electronic payments, all are, 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 can all be monitored, and you can't monitor cash. Now, this sounds like a good idea. If I didn't believe the Bible, and I didn't know what the Bible said, I would think, yeah, that's great. I would. And most of the world will think that. As a matter of fact, we are moving there really, really, really fast. Most Chinese today pay by scanning or on with their phone or that little phone you got that can pay your bills. In the UK, cards are online. Cash is no longer accepted on public transportation and the ATM machines are disappearing. Sweden is the number one leading country leading this movement. 85% of the, the, the banking in Sweden is done online and only 2% of purchases in Sweden are made by cash. Now Sweden, something right in Denmark, and over there, all that stuff starts in Sweden, and then it jumps the pond from the UK, comes to California, and then works its way back to us. That's the way it's always been. Fads, sins, clothing styles, all that stuff starts over there, and everybody thinks, wow, they're so cool. That's where this, uh, this uh, free health care for everybody uh, that's how that, they say these other countries are doing it. These other countries are doing it. And they'll use this as an opportunity, as another step toward that. Here we are, because the government's going to pay everybody who's out of work. The government's going to pay for you uh, tests. And I'm, I'm not against that. I don't reckon I don't understand a lot of that. Uh, but I'm, 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 what I'm saying is we're moving toward a cashless society. Right. What do you think would happen if, when it gets a thousand times worse than what it is now? If you eliminate cash, here's the way you sell it. 
purse, you'll lower crime. You don't have to worry about somebody stealing your purse. You don't have to worry about somebody getting your credit card. It, it's all right here. A lady, look how convenient that is. A lady can take her kids, go out to the park, go to the beach, pay for everything, just scan your hand, pay for everything. You don't have to worry about getting robbed. Think of all the crime that would be lowered. Backdoor drug deals, where cash are. No, stop that. The government would have a monitor on all financial transactions, 100%, if there's no cash. So if that's true, then there's less money laundering, none. Less time and cost of printing money and counting it. Look at how easy it would be for international travel. Instead of getting exchanged from dollars to pesos or wherever, wherever you're going, to uh, uh, German money or Chinese money, you just it automatically switches your money to their money and their money to your money. Ladies and gentlemen, that's where we're headed. The mark of the beast may include or give you right to an inoculation or a vaccine that would cure a terrible disease that will be going on during the tribulation. May. May. And I said may. Wouldn't doubt it one bit. He's got power. Then when God pours out his wrath, we'll talk about that tonight, when God pours out his wrath, there's going to be a sore develop on the people that have the mark of the beast. And God will do like he did in Egypt back in the Old Testament when all those plagues came on Egypt, but his people were spared. Things is fixing to heat up. And we may not see it in the next year, the next five years, next ten years, but everything I'm saying to you this morning, except where I say this is my opinion, will come to pass. Finally, I'll say three things. Let me give you some advice. Personally, I want to ask, ask you and, and advise you three, three things. Don't panic. Don't go crazy. Don't, don't quit doing what you need to do for God. God will get it if you do that. Things are going to get worse. You've heard, my, you've heard my philosophy for years. Expect the worst. Hope for the best. Take what comes. Thank, you, thank God for you ain't in hell and keep your mouth shut. Right? Hope for the best. Expect the worst. Take what comes, keep your mouth shut. Thank God you ain't burning in hell. What a blessing. Three things I'll tell you what you want to do this morning. Number one, wash your hands. Wash your hands. I'm, I'm the world's worst. I never wash my hands. I, I eat stuff off the floor. I, I was playing ball. Really, I never thought about stuff like that. Dirt's good for you. Germs ain't, but dirt ain't going to hurt you. I was playing ball the other morning. And this stuff got in my head. Don't touch nobody. Don't touch. Well, I was out there with 12 of us there. And everybody was sweating. You know what I mean? And the ball, everybody touches the ball. And I found, my, just like I always, every time I went down the floor, I went like this. I wiped sweat. I like I sweat. I wiped my nose like that. And I thought, I can't do that. I can't do that. And then we had one of them little things like that back there. And, and I'd take it and squirt. And I thought, Lord, that's probably the germiest thing in here. <laughs> that little thing on top of that hand sanitizer. And I started, I started getting weird, feeling weird. Don't get like that. Don't get like that. God took care of us all these years. He's able to take care of us now. Chill out. right? There. <laughs> Calm down. Live for the Lord. Do right. Uh, and, and wash your hands. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Amen. It can live three days on that right there. Cleanse your hands. Wash your hands. Number two, wash your heart. Wash your heart. You better make sure your heart's clean. If anybody gets sick, James 5 is still in the book. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him in the name of the Lord, and the Lord shall raise him up. So that's our, that's our weapon against sickness. Wash your heart. The Lord could use this to get our hearts right. The Lord did say to Israel, if you'll serve me and do right, I'll keep these diseases away from you. That's not to us. That's a promise to Israel. The Lord never promised a Christian they'd never get sick. Them TV preachers are crazy. They'll get something before it's over with. But there is a principle there. There is definitely a principle taught there that if you serve God and do right, your chances are way better of, of staying right. Wash your heart. 
Wash your heart. Wouldn't this be a good time for everybody to wash their heart? Wouldn't this be a good time for everybody to say, wash me in the blood of Jesus. Lord, I quit doing this. I quit that. Quit your cussing. Quit your drinking. Quit smoking pot. Quit living for the devil. Quit watching dirty movies. Quit looking at trash on your phone. Wash your heart. Amen. Good time to do it. You can't go home and watch football this evening. Wash your heart, brother. You watch an old rerun. Watch Netflix. Waste your whole time doing that. Why would you want to waste your time doing that? Why would you want to waste your time watching stupid movies when you could be saying, man, what an exciting time to be alive. I'm going to wet my heart right, and I'm going to witness to people, and I'm going to get everybody I can and say, what? hey, don't, listen, you young people, don't dare do something stupid like go to spring break. Don't do it. That's wicked. That's wrong. And you ain't got no business going to a bunch of mess like that. I don't, like, I don't care if you like it or not. Anybody with a brain in their head knows that. Stay away from bars. Stay away from honky-tonks. Wash your heart, wash your habits, number three. Wash your hands, wash your heart, wash your habits. It's a good time to stop playing church. Spiritually, there's a lot of diseases. I thought, you know, them canceling them Broadway shows and stuff up in New York. I said, good, glory to God, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wash your habits. I'm going to stop right there this morning. I'm going to reiterate a couple things I said, and then we're going to have Miss Desi come, and we're going to pray. Wouldn't it be a good time for you this morning to wash your heart? Wouldn't it be a good time to get saved? You say, Brother Danny, is all that bad stuff you talked about coming? It sure is. It sure is. This is just a step in that direction. Let's pray for our leaders, pray for, the, pray for the Democrats, pray for the Republicans, pray for everybody, pray for people in China, pray for, pray for everybody. Let's pray for everybody. Let's respect our leaders. We, we respect the governor. We respect his re order or whatever it is. That's probably going to be challenged this week by a lot of preachers and stuff, but we'll do what we're supposed to. But your, your responsibility is you doing right before God Almighty. So let's do that. Let's stand with our heads bowed. She's coming. And I want to do something this morning I never do on Sunday morning. I have before, but it's been a while. I want us to have an old-fashioned altar prayer. If you don't want to come to the altar, you can pray there at your seat. Everyone that can and will, if you're not hindered in some way, would like to just kneel around here this morning. While she's playing softly, we're going to get down here and we're going to pray. Pray for our country, pray for our kids, pray for our churches, pray for our families, our kids, our grandkids. Lord, have mercy, y'all. This is March. There's no telling what could be going on this time next week. There's no telling. There is absolutely no telling. God only knows. Time quit playing church, ain't it, buddy? Ain't it time for you, Daddy? Quit playing church? Ain't it time for you just you hit and miss, pray and quit, read and throw it down, Christians? Quit playing church. Brother, we don't know what's going to happen. We don't. There's a wake-up call. Wake-up call. Maybe you're here this morning you've never been saved by the grace of God. Why don't you come get saved? Why don't you ask the Lord to save you? Come deep in your heart, deep, deep down in your heart. Do you know everything's right? Do you know everything's right deep, deep down in your heart? I hope that you'll come. I hope that you'll move here this morning. Our Heavenly Father, we ask in Jesus' name, Holy Spirit of God, we thank you, Lord. The door's open to Shining Light Baptist Church. I pray in Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, that you would bless everybody in this place today. All the kids back yonder, bless them, the bus kids, junior church, everyone here today. Lord, I know there's people here struggling already financially, physically and spiritually Lord help us help us to rededicate our life to you as brother Wayne said last night give a hundred percent help us to give a hundred percent help us to give one hundred percent do what ought to be done and God will thank you and praise you for it we love you Lord bless those that are sick not able to be out this morning that had to work traveling gone 
family and friends. Lord, help us this morning. Help us to put you first. And stay right with you, we ask. In Jesus' name we pray. If I'm still praying, don't, you don't have to get in a hurry. We're not done. God's... Sing that and mean it this morning. Search me and try me, Master, today. Amen. Whiter than snow, Lord. Amen. Wash me just now. As in the presence of the All right, while these are still praying this morning, uh, tonight, uh, well, I'm going to. We're going to dig in some prophecy, and I'm going to preach on you ain't seen nothing yet. And I'm going to go over plagues in history, the great, famous plagues in history. I know a lot of people say, well, I want to be uplifted when I come to church. Well, you might need to be downloaded uh, or something. <laughs> Some, you don't all, sometimes we need to be downloaded a little bit before we need to be uplifted. Uh, so uh, be back this evening, 6 o'clock. Lord bless you for it, okay? All right, turn that thing off a minute.